Hi everyone, my name is attorney Renee Bauer and my business is the Happy Even After. Um, I have a podcast by the same name, Happy Even After, and I have been a divorce attorney for 20 years and um, have decided that I wanted to bring my work and my mission to a bigger platform. So here I am and welcome to the, the talk of Happy Even After Divorce. So let's get started. Now, so many of us have ended up in a place in their life where they said, how did I get here? This doesn't look like the way I wanted it to. Um, it maybe looks different. It feels different. It doesn't feel like a good fit. Maybe you're unfulfilled. And we see this happening all the time. It might be a job. It might be um, where we're living, maybe a relationship, a marriage. And yet so many of us get stuck there and we don't make any sort of changes to move from that place. And so that's what my talk is about today, is hopefully to inspire you and empower you to make some, some decisions and maybe get unstuck a little bit because we're all entitled to live a peaceful, happy, content life, even if it looks a little different than what we originally uh, expected it to look. So we're all entitled to an alternative happy ending and that's a happy even after even if it is big and scary and uncomfortable so i want to start by sharing a story with you when i was in fifth grade i was uh, participating in a theater program and part of the the program was that we would put on a play at the end of the summer so my role at the end of the summer was i was i played an owl yes an owl so on opening night i had to sit on top of a big paper mache rock and i was covered in this ridiculous costume of feathers and not the like the good kind of fabulous feathers that i would totally wear today like the the really obnoxious ugly feathers and an orange beak and my costume was like a trash bag and i was all shoved you know had stuffing shoved in there so there i am going into uh, junior high sitting on this rock with a beak and I it's time for me to give my lines and I have friends and family in the audience and when I went to open my mouth nothing came out I completely forgot what I was supposed to say and so I could do the only thing that I knew I had to do at that moment was I had to play a little song on a recorder and we all know what a recorder is our kids have tortured us with this device in elementary school so I brought that plastic device up to my lips to play that well-rehearsed song and I completely forgot the tune as well. So all I did was blow into it and squeak out a few off-key notes and that was really the start of my fear of public speaking and it was a phobia of mine for the longest time. And despite that, I went on to become a lawyer but not just any kind of lawyer, a litigator whose job was literally to speak for a living. And here I am today speaking in front of you um, and, uh, and speaking uh, every week to an audience, um, much like yourselves, because I want to share this message. And even when something is big and bold and scary, it's still worth it. So today we're going to talk about really identifying what that big thing is and what you can do about it and how you can listen to yourself to understand that whatever it is that you're looking to do whatever kind of change you're looking to make you can do that and you have the power to do it so long as you're, you're listening to yourself and the payoff of tapping in to what it is that really serves you and what lights you up is that you can move on to live the life that you're meant for you have a light to bring into this world and if we're stuck if we're not stepping into our real purpose we can never bring that that light in so today what i want to do is share with you um the the concept that i came up with about how we make decisions and so when we're faced with that decision about whether we want to take the new job or whether we're going to walk away from our marriage that we're listening to the right voice because that makes the difference and so so often when we're making decisions we're listening to all of the, the external we 
hear things and absorb things and take in things and form our decisions based on what the external influences are telling us. So I'm going to share my screen here for a second and show you, show you this. So this is, this is your external influences. This is what we use to make decisions. And, and we're tapping into, um, outside sources such as social media. How often do we scroll through Instagram and decide that our life um, should look like someone else's feed? We're, um, we're letting our friends tell us what we should be doing or maybe our family's um, opinion about something telling us how we should be making decisions. I mean, how much do we let media or magazines tell us about our worth based on our weight? or our age? How often are we letting our marital status tell us how worthy we are for, um, for, to be loved? Those influences, when they make your, 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 use that to make your decisions, that's where you become stuck. And that's where, that's where the challenge becomes into trying to figure out, okay, um, what should I be doing? I'm confused. I'm overwhelmed. There's too much noise. There's too much, too many voices, too much chatter. And you're not able to really tune into what it is that you need. So what I want to share with you is there is a way to tap in to what your purpose is. And there's a way to calm the chatter and there's a way to reduce the, new, the noise. And when we're making decisions using our external influences, it looks something like this. That means that, that the decision-making ability that we have is so greatly influenced by the outside. But today I wanna to flip that. I want our script to say this. I want your inner knowing to be the one that helps you make your decision. Now we can apply this to whether you're sitting there saying, should I leave my marriage? Is divorce in my future? Or we can apply this to really anything. Should you leave the job? Should you start the business? Should you move across country? Any decision that you make, you should be making it from this place of your inner knowing and not and instead, of, instead of the opposite. So how do we do that? Well, we want to, so, so the, the way that I make decisions, um, you know, often people will tap into meditation and use that as a place where they can really listen to their inner voice. Now, I'm not that person. Um, as much as I love to try to meditate, it's not something that works for me. So I've come up with another exercise and it's a meditation in motion, essentially. And it's going to help you to get to that answer of what your inner voice is. And that inner voice is what I call your decision maker. And your decision maker is what should be guiding you. So when clients come to me, usually they sit across from my conference room table and they look at me and they have a question that they want answered. And they may have spent some money to, to pay for a consultation to sit down with me, but they're asking me a question that has nothing to do with my legal training. They want an answer. And the question they ask is, how do I know? They want to know the answer to how do I know it's time to leave the marriage? They're looking for someone to tell them what to do. And the problem with that is their answer is within them, but they don't know it yet. And so when I try to tell a client, well, you have the ability to make the decision on your own. You don't need me to decide, tell you what to do. You don't need your friends. You don't need your family to tell you what to do. You already know the answer as long as you tap into that decision maker. And now usually they sit back, they might fold their arms, look at me a little sideways and say, I just paid you how much for you to tell me to tap into my decision maker? What the heck does that mean? And I say, listen, hear me out a little bit. We're gonna do an exercise. And everyone kind of does it begrudgingly, but it works. And I wanna show you, share with you today what that exercise is. You're going to take a piece of paper and this, this exercise is going to give you the answer to the question of how do you know. So you're going to take that piece of paper and on one side of it, you're going to write external. And on the other side of it, you're going to write internal. And so 
your, oops, let me get there. And so what I want you to write on that paper is what, what's holding you back on the external side? What are all of those things, what are all of those external influences that's holding you back from that answer that you need. So when someone comes to see me and they're asking, how do I know it's time for my marriage um, to, to it, it's done, it's time to move on, it's time to walk away from the toxicity, it's time for something new, it's time for to say no more to whatever's happening. And usually what's holding them back are questions like, how do I pay my bills? What will people say? What if I miss my kids when they're not with me on, the, on a weekend or with their other parent? Where will I live? What if I'm alone for the rest of my life? Will I ever find someone else? It's going to be expensive. Am I going to have to go back to work? And what does my faith say about divorce? You know, those are the things that are dictating how someone's answering their own question of how do I know? And it impacts them. And it makes them confused and overwhelmed. And it's the reason why someone comes to me and sits across that table and looks to me for an answer. On the other side of that paper, you only need to write one thing. It's going to be one line. And that is the internal. That's that little voice that has been speaking to you that's causing the doubt and making you ask that question to begin with. And so what is that internal voice saying to you on the how, how do you know what what is it what is it whispering in your ear when there's so much external chatter and so much noise and so much chaos on the outside what is that little voice on the inside saying to you that's your decision maker that's going to be the thing that helps you make that decision that's your how do you know that's the, the thing that you circle that you don't need your family to tell you, about, to, to give you an answer to. You don't need Google to answer that for you. You don't need a lawyer to answer that for you. You know because that voice told you that that's, that's what you should be doing and that's what's right and that's the next step for you. And so the point of that is that when you make a decision, I want you to feel confident about it. I want you to be clear about what your decision is because it's the right decision for you. So often when someone's going through a divorce, they get hung up in the shame, in the guilt, and that's what torments them for months and years even after their divorce. I'm divorced. I'm a divorce lawyer. I live in this space every single day in the shame and guilt from my own divorce ate me from the inside out. And I kept it inside. I didn't talk to people. Um, I, the, I didn't talk to them about what I was feeling and the struggle that I was dealing with. And I realized once I started having conversations out in the open about this, that everyone else is feeling the same thing too. And that's the shame and it's, it's heartbreaking. Your divorce does not define you. It's just a, a moment in your life a tiny little blip, a disruption from what you thought your life should be. But maybe it wasn't meant for that. Maybe there's another purpose. Maybe in order to really step into your own power, this has to happen. So you see, when someone makes that decision, when they tap into their decision maker, that doesn't mean it's smooth sailing. That doesn't mean that everything is easy and peachy and, and it's going to just to, to fly by and you're going to be like, okay, I made my decision. Sometimes those decisions are going to be the hardest, most difficult decisions that you've ever had to make. And it still can be worth it. I mean, isn't that crazy to think that something that could be so devastating in that moment in your, of your life is 100% worth it. So when you make a decision, I want you to own it and feel it and be clear that it's the right decision for you because you were listening to the right voice. You were listening, you were making a decision based on this and that's your inner knowing. 
So I want to just share with you, um, if you're at that point where you're still trying to decide or maybe things have just started, um, I have a free mini video course called First Steps to Freedom. If you shoot me an email at this address, you can screenshot that. I will send the course over to you and also some other um, blogs that come out each week that will share more insight into um, in, into the process and, and going through a divorce and all of the things to think about. Now, that woman who's sitting across from me, I want to go back to her. She, she knows why she's there and she knows the answer already. And whether she comes out the end of her divorce just surviving it or actually thriving through it has everything to do with the questions that she's asking herself. And so the person who's asking the questions, how am I going to pay my bills and how am I going to survive? That's the person who again is looking for external answers. Let's flip that to the person who asks the questions, what can I do to make sure I have enough money to pay my bills? What can I do to make sure that I'm, um, I'm going to keep myself busy when my children aren't with me? What can I do? to make sure my lawn is cut every week. That person is looking internally for an answer. And the conversation that the questions that she's asking predict exactly how she's going to come out of her divorce. That's called the freedom framework. That emotional energy is that pivotal point that you are putting into your, your outcome. That's the decisional threshold and that's the predictor of what happens post-divorce. So you have, today we talked about a lot in such a short period of time, and I just want to take a second to recap, but we looked at how external influences can be the root and the cause of your feelings of overwhelmed and uncertainty, and how if you flip that over to a, a, um, your pyramid of influence so that your internal decision maker is making that decision for you, then you're going to be making a decision that is truly authentic to you. You've also learned um, what questions to ask uh, when you're going through anything. It's not just a divorce, but anything that might be challenging. And if you're asking for someone to resolve it externally, then you're going to survive whatever that is. But if you're looking internally for your own solutions, then you're going to thrive. And so what, what could we do now? Um, this is just one small point of something larger. And I want to share with you for a second um, the D course. I created this course, it's a video course, um, to really help someone get through their whole divorce process. I've spent 20 years working with women to really um, get their mindset straight, to set proper expectations, and really um, help them beyond just the law, because divorce is so much more than that. It's a holistic approach to your life. And that's the whole reason why um, I created this course where we can dive into things like this um, about money and co-parenting and property and all of the things that you need to know so that you can go to your attorney and say, I have my goal set. Here's what I want to achieve. And you already have a control and you're already empowered to make decisions. And you're, again, you're not relying on an external source, your attorney to make these decisions for you. You're doing them yourself. And so part of this course, there's over 200 pages of, of documents, ebooks, workbooks, guides, co-parenting guides um, to really help you through the process and give you a roadmap to get from the point where maybe you're saying, how do I know, to the point where you're saying, I've got this. So one final story before I wrap this up, I had a friend um, call me as I was preparing for this speech and she had something going on in her life that was just um, really giving her a hard time. And she asked me for an answer. She wanted some advice. And I, I told her that I couldn't give her that advice, but that she had to do something in order to fix it. And she needed to set some benchmarks for that. So in three weeks, she should address the concern that she had and communicate it. And so that then there could be a plan in place to, to change that. And in three months, she should have a a, um, a roadmap to execute a change so that in a year from now she wasn't stuck right where she started. 
the whole point is to make small changes in benchmarks so that you can um, take one step forward at a time to change whatever is it is that is not working anymore. So I'm still terrified to speak in public, um, but I find my voice every single day, even though it's terrifying, because I have something to say. You have something to say too. It's so important for you to find your voice and figure out what it is that you, you want to say to the world. And by making the internal shift and the internal changes that you're faced with right now. So now that you know that you can use your voice and you know how to listen to your internal decision maker, what are you gonna do about it? It's all in your power.